Why is it that almost everyone who believes that the Bible is true also believes that there is one God? And what problems does the Bible's teaching about one God pose for the Trinity? Stay tuned. What if I were to tell you that in church history, there are many people who attempted to solve one problem, but in the process, their solutions created other problems. Now, if you hang on to the end of this video, I'll actually explain to you how biblical bonitarianism solves this same problem without creating new ones. My name is Mario and welcome to the biblical bonitarian channel. Now, it doesn't take you long if you're reading the scriptures to be convinced that the Bible clearly teaches belief in one God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 6, or in the prophet Isaiah, we see declarations that God is one in Isaiah chapter 43, 44, and also 45. Let me read an example from Isaiah chapter 45, beginning at verse 21. It says, who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a savior. There is none besides me. Turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. When we come to the New Testament, we find in chapters like Mark chapter 12 and 1 Timothy chapter 2 that this same belief in one God is reaffirmed alongside other truths. So what was the problem? Well, in the New Testament, there are a few passages that also teach that in addition to the Father being God, that the Son is also God. John 1 and 1, John 20, 28, Titus 2, 13. Now, the problem became is how can we hold that there is one God and then also say the Father is God and the Son is God? Well, some leaders in church history said, okay, we have a solution. What we'll do is we'll actually redefine what one God means. And we'll say that one God refers to what God is. There's one what of what God is, his substance, his essence. But there are more than one persons who are that substance, who share that substance. And they said, problem solved. So we can say on one end, there's one God, one substance. And on the other end, we can say that each one of them are God without any contradiction. Now, I said that that's a solution, and it's, you can see where they can kind of get it from. But there's one major problem with that solution. It's a big one. The Bible never says it that way. In fact, the Bible does exactly the opposite. What the Bible does is it actually, whenever it refers to one God, especially the New Testament, distinguishes that one true and living God from the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, it's unanimous. Let me give you a few passages that show this by way of example. The first is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. It reads as follows. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Paul says the same thing in First Timothy chapter two, beginning at verse five. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Additionally, we have a very clear verse that actually describes the Father specifically as the one God in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now, we can also cite passages where the Lord Jesus Christ himself makes this distinction. For example, in John chapter 17, where he actually refers to the Father as you, the true and living God. And he just himself and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent 
And we see similarly done in John chapter 5, where he actually refers to the Father as the one who has life in himself, and he's granted the Son to have life in himself. And in chapter 6, where he refers to the Father as the living Father, and that he lives because of the Father. So one of the first things, or one of the first solutions that we have to do, I said, I'll explain to you how I believe that bonitarianism solves this, and it's really a two-step solution. The first thing that we have to do is take a deep breath, <laughs> And by faith, I think we have to trust that the Bible means what it says. Now, for some of you, that's a major step. That maybe when God says there's one God the Father, like he does in both the Old and the New Testament, we find statements about there's one God and Father, like in Malachi and other places, and similarly in the New Testament passages, God means what he says. Now, the thing that we all are saying is, well, what about Jesus? Well, I think the Bible also gives us a clear solution. Rather than coming up with a solution of one God and multiple persons and the one God refers to a substance and, and the persons are God and they're together have it, something that the scriptures never say, the scriptures actually tell us what to believe. And I think the problem comes down is that we don't really believe in the prepositions of scripture. Prepositions are these small words, but they convey large meaning and they describe relationships. So, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, we're told, that there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. Now, the prepositions there, from and through, are small, but they convey major meaning. Meaning, the Father is the one God. It says it very clearly there in 1 Corinthians 8 as another passage. But it does not stop there. It says, and, that conjunction gives us more belief. And it says, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, and it defines him as the one through whom. So the Father has ultimacy. All things are from him and for him, and the Son has agency. All things are through him. The Bible is not opposed to saying that the Son depends upon the Father while still being like the Father in full likeness and divinity, being all that the Father is. But He's the Father, and the Son is the Son, and those words actually have meaning. Additionally, we find in the scriptures that they're not opposed to using the word Lord for the Son to teach that he is divine. I think the biggest problem for us is that we all assume that the only word for divinity is the word God, but the word Lord is a divine title. In fact, when you use the word Lord, the next question you should ask is, well, Lord of what? Because if you're Lord of just something small, then you're not divine. But if you're Lord of heaven and earth, the Lord of glory, the Lord of angel armies, all these things that the Lord Jesus is, then that is a divine title. Any Jew, any person living in the Greco-Roman world would have understood that to be a claim for divinity. Additionally, that Lord is associated with the divine name that's used for God. And that's why Jesus is given the name that's above every name. So the biblical solution, which we believe is the Bonitarian solution, is that there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. The Son depends upon the Father, but the Son is the image of the invisible God. Therefore, we do not have to come up with any creative solutions. The Bible already provides it. If you like this content, we also would like you to click on the following videos. One video that talks about how Jesus is God, and also the other video that talks about must you believe in the Trinity to be saved. As always, if you like this, give us a thumbs up and remember us in prayer. And grace and peace times two.